Welcome to the Photo Flunky Show, episode number 44. Today, we're going to talk about getting started with Lightroom. I know a lot of uh, people who are listening to this are already using Lightroom. They're kind of getting into it. But I wanted to have a conversation for folks who are just getting started with Lightroom, even if you've been using it for four years. Hi, my name is William Beam. Hi, my name is Lee Beam. And you're the one who's been using it for four years. Yes, I have. We're going to have show notes available at williambeam.com slash episode 44. And of course, you can find a transcript of the show there for free. And there are links to subscribe to the show at photoflunky.com. So if you want to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or Blueberry, just go there. We'll, we'll hook you right up. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's go back to my premise now. This is kind of a beginner's, not even guide to Lightroom, but kind of like a beginner's, why do I even want to bother with Lightroom in the first place? So let's, let's start off with that. Why use Lightroom? I know I've got my opinions on it, but tell me, when you were getting started with your photography, you didn't start with Lightroom. You were using other programs. Actually, I was using nothing. You were using nothing. I, I used nothing for a couple of years. I think I was misled. I, I just fell for one of the older mistakes that new photographers make, where I believe that if, if I couldn't get the picture right myself, that I was cheating. So it was cheating to use Lightroom and just... So everybody knows your use for Lightroom isn't organization, it's for post-processing. It's for post-processing. And really, eventually, I think I came around after joining some photography discussion forums, and I realized that you don't have to manip manipulate your photos to make them look like something that isn't real. Lightroom will enhance where your camera just couldn't quite capture what your eye was able to see. And when I've, well, not necessarily in Lightroom, but you can do that on, on various so different on, programs. But basically what you were looking for post-processing was what, what it really should be. It's, yeah. it's to finish the photo. Your camera, yeah. you do as much as you can in camera. Yes. And then you still need to finish it because every digital photo still needs sharpening. It's probably going to need some kind of contrast adjustment. Yeah. And a few other things, depending upon, you know, what the photo is. Yeah. And although I had a DSLR, I only shot in JPEGs. I had no need for raw files. So why waste the space on, on the camera? Okay. So eventually you, you went through some different programs. I think you went through Topaz and a few others. Were they not doing what you needed to do or was it not convenient? How, what, how did you get from other programs to using Lightroom? I did trials on a number of them based on recommendations. I think there were a few which you recommended to me. There was nothing wrong with the software, or the programs themselves. But I eventually settled on Lightroom because it seemed to cover the bases for my requirements. And the most important thing was I found it very easy to use. I, it didn't take me long to get into doing what I needed to do. Now, there are many other capabilities within Lightroom that I never touched on, but they were surplus to requirement at the time, or maybe they still are. However, it, it, it was easy for me to, I, I found that I was, I looked at it and tried it out during the trial period and realized I can work with this. I can use that. It makes sense. And you didn't really, other than watching some, you know, some online videos, you didn't really have any training for it. I didn't have any training for it. What I did learn, and that was through, um, sadly for Topaz Labs, which I probably would have ended up buying um, I, I learned the hard way that you should download your tutorials and go through them before you download the free trial, because I think it, I'm pretty certain it was Topaz Labs where I, I downloaded the free trial. I think I had, I believe it was 30 days. I don't recall now. And I hadn't gone through any tutorials. I ended up having a very, a lot of heavy commitments for a few weeks and I was left with like just over a week to use it. And I still had to figure out how to use it while I was trying to test it out. And it was just overwhelming. You know, I'd come home from work. I had other demands in the home and I ran out of time. So I, I, I kind of learned. In, in my own approach to Lightroom was was later than probably a lot of other people who maybe were on the same path as I was. I Because I was into Aperture. I, Apple had Aperture. And quite honestly, I always thought Aperture was a superior product to Lightroom in terms of organization. It was much faster. Lightroom is not nearly as fast as Aperture was for processing photos. And I know other people will use products like Capture One that are that's very fast. For some reason, Adobe just hasn't built Lightroom to be as fast. They've improved it over what it used to yeah. be, but it's faster now. And for a, a number of years, the post-processing engine inside of Aperture was better than Lightroom. But I'd say that when Lightroom 4 came out, Adobe took the lead. And they had a better post-processing engine since then. And of course, Apple has since discontinued Aperture. So it's it to me, it's really the only choice. I'm 
I'm happy with Lightroom. I, w I wish it was a little bit faster, but you're right. The workflow for doing the post-processing is rather simple to go through for basic adjustments and, you know, 90, 95% of the photos, that's probably all I need. It is all I need. I mean, I'm not able to go and clone things and work in layers and mask. I don't, well, you, you've got your, what they call the little masking things with your mm -hmm. brushes and gradients, but really you, you don't have the same, you don't have as many features nowhere near as what you do with Photoshop. However, that was the selling point for me because I had Photoshop elements before that, that I'd bought and I didn't use it. In fact, I gave the, the software that was still on the good old CD drive and I gave it away to somebody. I said, I've paid for this. Have it. It's yours. It's wasting my time and making me mad. It would have made you madder had you used it. Oh, okay, good. I, because everybody said that was the easy, straightforward thing, and I hated it. So they, I was I was hesitant when I got... They do say that, and honestly, I really hate elements. I, when, I, when I got Lightroom, I was hesitant, but you know, it it, it was very... I've, what, I, what I like to call idiot proof. I, I felt that it was very um, easy to use. I, I am actually much happier and I think it's easier for me to use Lightroom and Photoshop together than it would be to try to do anything with Photoshop elements. But that's that's kind of getting us off of a, yeah. of a okay. off the topic here. So your whole decision was simply because the, the post processing was better. You had no desire or need for organization. And that's a lot of people, that's what they want Lightroom to do. And that's it, almost the premise that it's built upon is not just the post processing, but how to organize your photos, but you've got a different take on that. Well, it's not so much that I have a different take on it. It kind of didn't matter to me. I never anticipated that I would be taking that many photos that it would matter. It, it sounds stupid. It probably is. But at the time, I needed something that would post-process my photos. I wanted something that I could afford. This was before Creative Cloud. I believe that was not yet in 2012. So, um, I think it was, kind of... it, it was kind of coming out. I think it came out just shortly yeah. after that. But I... It, it did what I needed it to do. It was affordable and I had no need for anything else because bearing in mind that Photoshop was costing a whole lot more oh, before Creative Cloud. So th that was almost, uh, well, it pretty much was out of my budget. Yeah, Lightroom was affordable at roughly 150 bucks, but yeah. Photoshop, you'd probably spend $650 because you didn't have yes. Creative Cloud where you could pay for it on a monthly plan or th what they have now with a photography plan that bundles you know, Lightroom and Photoshop together basically 120 bucks a year and you can have both products. Yes, and yes, five was, was not was not cheap because I think that was the current version at the time that I got Lightroom, which was Lightroom 4 on the, I bought the license for it. The reason that you weren't really interested in organization is because of your workflow. You take your photos, you come back and you process them immediately. I do. So you go through and you decide which photos you're going to keep, those you process and everything else gets tossed. It does. I wipe the card and I'm done. No regrets. Do you know you don't regret what you forget? Okay, I, I'm good with that. And the reason this fascinates me is because I'm the opposite. I go out and take my shots, and the last thing I want to do is come back and sit down and post-process them right away. I kind of, I load them all up into Lightroom. You know, I tag them, I organize them, I do my copyright registration, even all the ugly ones. So, you know, if I take, if I bump the shutter and take a picture of my ankle... <laughs> I'm registering that with a U.S. copyright office. I don't office. do any of that. And this, this is actually going to amuse you and probably drive you nuts. But I noticed today that somewhere along the line, and it seems to be since before we even got married, my camera's date and time is out like by about 15 months. And I don't know what the time is out by. So I don't even have the time and date correct on my stuff. In every other aspect, you are the most organized person I know. And but I am the slob. Yes, but I've got a creative side and I think that's what kind of balances me out. I think that's what helps me keep myself sane. And my creative side lets me not get too caught up in, in everything being just so. And I really am the complete opposite when it comes to anything creative. I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, it's just disorganized. It I, I am kind of the haphazard and all over the place. And that is my style. See, I'm meticulous about my creative side. because <laughs> I've, I've got everything organized the way I want it to. I've got it tagged with keywords. I'll let it sit there for a while, but then I can easily find it, you know, inside of Lightroom because of the way I do things with keywords. And then I can decide, all right, I'll post-process what I need. The only time I really process something right away is if I need it for an assignment. Like we right. go out and shoot something and, and that's kind of a bit of a joke because we shot something a month ago that I just not post-processed today. Yeah. But you know what? Today was the day that I needed it for the assignment in the post that came out. Otherwise, I've got photos that I've taken years ago that I still haven't processed because they're there when I need them. Here's an example. I've got another site where I want to do 
Astoria on Las Vegas. It's going to, it's taken me multiple trips to Las Vegas and taking photos to get all the information I want for the story. It's something that's been gelling for years. There's no way in the world I could just pick my winners right then and then know that they're going to fit into a story that I haven't even developed for the next four years. Mm, you see, I have to do that immediately. We've got different approaches. I, I really rely upon all of the uh, organizational features within Lightroom, but also within the post-processing. I agree with you. The, the workflow is really simple. I, as a matter of fact, I can tell you almost everything, every photo I touch, I'm going to start off with kind of the same thing. I'm going to start off with lens correction. I now, do too. I'm yes. going to go down to camera calibration and I'm going to move the blue slider over to about like plus 25. Hmm. Then I'm going to go up to basic and I'm going to start at the bottom. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Why do you move the blue slider? Because it really helps the colors, okay. especially with skin tones. Blue, for some reason, that's you know beyond beyond my intelligence. It just really makes the colors pop a bit more. Now, I know you hate that word pop, but if I move that blue slider over, it gives some presence to the colors. Oh, I, do, I understand colors popping. I hate it when people say they make their photos pop. All right. So, we, I won't so be, you're, you're okay all right, there. I won't, I'm talking about colors. I, I won't pop any photos. Don't pop the photos. But then, you know, when you go through the shadows and highlights and, and stuff like that, all I'm doing is I'm holding down the shift key and I'm double clicking the title and Lightroom will automatically kind of make a, a decision of where your highlights and shadows and other things should be. I, I'll still go back and tweak them if I need to, but you know, most of the time it gets it right. Mm -hmm. I will then go up and hit the contrast. Then I'll go down, I'll bump some vibrance and maybe a little bit of clarity. And nine out of 10 times, that's all I do with a photograph. I don't put that on a preset because, you know, the sliders are going to be a little bit different each time. Yeah. But I start with that and it just gives me a really nice, vibrant photograph. And mm -hmm. from there, then I can decide, do I need to remove dust spots? Do I need to do upright? Mm -hmm. Do I need to take it to Photoshop? See, I don't have dust spots. I'm, I'm lucky with my cameras and uh, lenses. Well, this is the but, other part of me where I told you I was a slob. I've got dust spots all over my but camera. I do do sharpening. And I always do a little bit of noise reduction because I find the raw files neat. Well, if you, they always seem to need some sharpening. Every photo needs some sharpening. And depending on what you're shooting, you may need some noise reduction. And again, for me, noise reduction, if it's something I'm going to put on a website, whatever is in Lightroom is perfect. Yeah. If it's something that I'm going to do for a portfolio kind of shot, I'm probably going to take it off to one of the programs that I use. Maybe a vignette, you know, at the end, if I, if I think that I need I that. I actually like that, but I never use a preset for a vignette. I always go down in the controls in Lightroom and do my own because I like to mess with, you know, the, the shape, the roundness and the, the I, feather and the... I'll do that as well. And, and maybe if I need to, I'll put on a uh, radial filter where I want to draw the eye. I want it just a little bit brighter, maybe half a stop to three quarters of a stop. I'm starting brighter. to enjoy the radial filter. And I, when I say I always have, I always did, be, but I used it selectively. But I'm enjoying it almost in favor of a, a vignette now. Because the one thing I was thinking today, I was working on something on Lightroom. I thought, I wish that Lightroom would let you move the center of the vignettes over across where you want it, which the radial filter will do. But every time you use it, you have to... I, I, it's it's a little bit awkward still. I just find that it's not as smooth and straightforward as what I would like. And it's such a simple thing. So many plugins will allow you to say, place center here. Yeah. Adobe, why have you not given us that simple little thing in Lightroom? All we want is a way to say, place center here. I do not know. And the funny thing is that I've got a, a free app on my iPhone for photo stuff. <laughs> and it lets you move the vignette center point. So it's it's weird. One of the things that we're talking about with getting started with Lightroom, and, and one of the reasons you may want to go with it is exactly what we've been talking about. It is very, very simple to go through and take your photos from your raw shot and turn it into something with great presence, great clarity, great contrast, great color, or even black and white if that's what you're looking for, within minutes. I was going to say quick, being nice and quick is is the best part. I do not want to sit, sit and spend 30 minutes on a photo. I mean, to me, that's unthinkable. Although you don't do this, for me, the organizational capabilities are there. I, I, I still like Aperture a bit better. When I get into uh, Lightroom, I will have maybe four or five folders under my Lightroom folder for my photos. I've got one for portraits. I've got one for travel, one for family, you know, maybe something for Orlando with the Disney World stuff. Yeah. And and that really covers most of what I'm doing. I, I think I've got another one for events because we do some event photography. And everything goes in those folders. And some people, uh, that drives them crazy. They say, how can you find your photos? I said, very simple. When I import them, 
it goes into a, into the last import collection. You select all your photos and you add tags to them. So we went to Animal Kingdom and I'm going to tag those photos with Animal Kingdom. I'm going to tag them with Walt Disney World and yeah. anything else. They're going to go in that folder for import. I can find them immediately. If I may need to go back later to individual photos and say, okay, this is the character of King Louie at Animal Kingdom. Yeah. Because King Louie and Baloo came by and, you know, slapped my hand the last time we were there. Yes, they did. But that's easy to find. I can find any Animal Kingdom folder or photo in Lightroom within seconds because I know the tag. Other people like to use collections. I hate collections. Collections, I think, are just like a, a big bin that doesn't really give you enough to filter what's inside of them. Tags do a much better job of that. So I'm, I'm getting a little off on a I do use again. tags. I actually like tags. I use them differently to you, though. Tags are very simple. They're simply text that describes what the what the photo is about or what is in the photo. They're, they're searchable terms, yeah. really. So to me, tags far exceed the benefit of collections. And you can make smart collections based off of tags. So it's if I need to do a quickly, like, show me all of my Animal Kingdom photos, and I make a smart collection because I have to work with it and pull, and call some things out. Then I've got a temporary collection with a smart collection. And when I'm done, I can get rid of that. And I haven't lost any of my photos. I haven't lost any of my material that helps me organize it. I think that another reason that we handle our things differently is you do different things with your photos. You're actually using them for a purpose when you use them. My photos are taken as memories of an occasion. So my stuff is organized, not in Lightroom, but it's organized in the destination folder, which is where it ends up. Once it's processed, it's done. That is my memory. You know, I did it to the best of my ability at the time, and that is it. And I, I'm done. I think that is a key point with this discussion. We're talking about getting started with Lightroom and why you may want to use it. All the training that I see takes you through pretty much the same process. You've got to organize your photos. You've got to build collections. You've got to build collection sets. And I think that's really untrue. It's helped me to understand what those processes are and what the things you can do are. We're, we're not even talking about getting into the maps and books and, and printing modules and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We're talking about stuff that every photographer has to do. You've got to be able to store your photos, the ones you want to keep, and you've got to be able to process your photos. That's, that's the core of Lightroom. And we do it differently because, as you said, we have different purposes. We do. And don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not suggesting that my way is better. In fact, I, I didn't start out this way. I did actually start out with the advice on tutorials of having things organized. I changed my laptop and the short story is stuff happened and I never really got things sorted out again. But, that's, but that brings me back to the point, though, is like not everybody needs to follow the same process. You, you don't. All the training that we see has this cookie cutter approach to how you work with Lightroom. And what works for one uh, person or one set of users may not be applicable to others. So if you're looking at Lightroom and you're thinking, I just want to process my photos with it. I don't want to do the organization. If that works for you, that's great. Because, yeah, it works. well, that's, that's what you're saying is like, I'm not keeping all those other photos. Why do I need to manage them inside of Lightroom? It does work for me. I think where things might become challenging for me and where I might live to regret it is if I were to change what I was doing with my photos mm -hmm. and at a later stage, suddenly the way that I'm working, you know, if my workflow changes and my needs change and requirements change, I'm going to have a problem. Yeah, but if your workflow changes, that. it's going to be from that point forward. You're that not, you're not going to be looking at old photos for, for a purpose that you don't even know of today. Yeah, you know, you're right. That, so that is true. You haven't yeah. lost you haven't lost a thing. You know, you're oh. working what you needed up to today and you've you've disregarded stuff that you tried it, but it was really irrelevant to what you need to do. It was. Look, that there are probably photos that have been, you know, they're sitting in some delete bin that now non existence that maybe could have been saved now if you know, that I wasn't didn't have the know how to do at the time. But, you know, you can't save everything. You cannot save the world. And not every photo is something you're going to go back and look at. Save your keepers. Keep your special things. And sometimes you're just going to take what you like and walk away. It's the end of the day. Well, you're saving yourself a lot of money, too. I mean, for example, I do save my photos. I want to save my photos because I do go back to them from time to time. But look at what I've spent. We're sitting at a desk where I have a RAID array that's got 16 terabytes of storage. And sitting next to that is another RAID array with 16 terabytes of storage to back up the first RAID array. Hmm. You know, so I've got over eight terabytes used space and I'm backing that up and I've got generations of the backup. I spent a good chunk of money putting all that together so that I can store those photos because they take a lot of space. Now, granted, I got a lot of iTunes movies out there too and music. 
But I would like my, everyone to know my husband is very proud of the fact that I'm a cheap date. She, she's, she's a wonderfully cheap date. And <laughs> I don't compromise on quality. No, you don't. But you also don't spend money where you don't need to. And this is one of the things with getting started with Lightroom is right at the outside, or excuse me, right at the outset, know what you want to accomplish. Yeah. Because there are a lot of features in Lightroom. They are not applicable to everybody. And just because you've been told that this is the way to do Lightroom doesn't necessarily mean it's the way that you have to do it. That's true. So I mean, I'm, my advice was coming from people who are doing something with their photos, usually in some either professional or partly professional capacity or, or on the road to getting there. And if I think about it now, for somebody taking family snapshots and I wanted to know where Christmas 2010 was located, well, it's on my hard drive in a folder that says Christmas 2010 under photos, my pictures and family. And you don't have that many to go through, so and it's not a difficult thing that no, you have to do searches. Absolutely not. And I, I had my, um, you know, I, I export them with the little things that make sense to me. I've got certain abbreviations. We've all got them. On the other hand, I've got 10,000 photographs at Walt Disney World and thousands more of Las Vegas and other travel places. I've, I'm never going to be able to just sort through a folder and where is that one picture where that person was making a face? <laughs> See, I've got a memory and I'll probably remember which year it was and then I'm able to narrow things You know, that's one of the other things I, I find amusing is there are people who will specifically create a folder structure that Lightroom would do this for them. You know, that's why I put everything into, you know, basically big folders. They all create a folder structure of date and time and year oh and so goodness. forth. Oh my goodness. And I thought, you know, there's a date stamp inside the camera and if, if you would actually put the proper date on your camera, you could use that. I know you're right. And I always used to do, I'll tell you something about using the date as a, as a way for filing things. We made our first ever vacation when I went to Toby was little to myself. I took her to Walt Disney World and I figured that I'd name these things by date. So I had, um, I had the dates from April and it started with the first day, which was say it was April 8th. Every day just had its batch of photos in there. And I thought it was so smart because I figured this was going to be our only trip. Well, we just ended up going back over and over and over again. And after a few years of kind of three week trips at a time, it's a little bit harder to remember what happened on which day. I can't remember what I did at breakfast this morning. I'm certainly not going to remember what I did on vacation yeah. six years ago. And I did go back and fix them. So, yeah, the date and time thing didn't make sense. That no. was before post-processing, though. Once I did actually get that, once I had Lightroom and I looked at it, there were things that I learned just from having the software, even if they were not applicable to me at the time. So, I, I get it. And with from what you're doing, like you're you're processing right away, you're throwing away the old stuff, mm -hmm. and then you're you've got your finished stuff in the folder that's named exactly what it was about. It makes it makes perfect sense for you. I couldn't work that way. You see, you've seen me. I went and took photos on Wednesday, Thursday morning. I was up early. I came back from my run, took my shower, and that laptop was fired up. It's like I need to get these photos. And you're driven to that. Where I'm, instead, I'm looking at other things and just uh I'll, I'll go back and finish those photos later <laughs> i i've got this thing about it I, I used to have a saying i don't use it so much anymore but I, I hate pending and anything that's hanging over me do it delegate or shoot it dead i don't do that because I, I don't mind something that is pending because if i don't have a deadline for it to be done i don't have a need for it to be done right away that's benefited me at times because i'll learn new techniques i'll get new tools and by the time I have a need for that photo, I may have a better way of doing something with it. I understand or, that. Or I may also learn a technique in Photoshop. I said, oh, I know what photo to use for that. I took this photo of a model. I thought it was going to be a throwaway, you know, but now I can composite it over here in this scene and it actually works. You know, yeah. I take this model over here, a background that I shot in Cuba. I put them together. I put a little shadow so it looks like she belongs there. I thought, hey, that works. Yeah. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have done that. And those those photographs were taken, you know, years apart. See, that's a different approach. And you you are smarter with that one. But I, I guess for, I, for me, for, for you, but you're, you're doing, doing different that. things to your photos. See, I'm not showcasing my photos anywhere. They're, those are our personal photos. We mm -hmm. keep those for us. I'm happy to share them. Feel free to use them. Please give credit. That would be really sweet of you. And I'd be your friend for that. But, you know, I'm not I'm, I'm not doing anything special with the photos or important to someone else. And that honestly is our lesson for today with getting started with Lightroom is before you dig in and take all these courses or start looking and listening to other people telling you how you have to do it. And this is the only way or this is the best way. Know what you want to do. You may not need all of that stuff. And with that in mind, I'm probably going to be starting to do more little tutorials and tips on Lightroom 
So in case you decided something you want to do, hopefully it'll be a resource for you. But in the meantime, getting started with Lightroom is before you do anything, know exactly what you want to get out of it. Yes. Thank you for listening to the Photo Flunky Show. Show notes are going to be available at williambeam.com slash episode 44. In fact, you know what? I've got a post that I wrote on why you should never create collections in Lightroom again. I'm going to put that in the show notes so you can look at that and see what I'm talking about with tagging and keywording and how that can really benefit you. We would love it if you would uh, stay in touch with us on the show. You can reach me on Twitter. The show is at Photo Flunky. And of course, you can follow me at WBEEM on Twitter. And of course, on what is it on uh, Facebook? That's the one. Man, I'm having a hard time using my words today. Facebook at William Beam Photography is my page. And of course, we would love it if you'd go to photoflunky.com, check out the links to subscribe. We'll see you next week. 